hi guys so um, it's yet another video and um, in this video what I'm going to do is um, to continue the series um, in which I share my mnemonics and so for for some time now I just started sharing my mnemonics and how I get some questions uh, correct and um, a lot of people have um, asked me to share my mnemonics with them so I'm doing right um, just that so today I'm going to talk about uh, SSRIs they are very high yield they have a very broad range of use and in the United States they are very very important in our clinical medicine and in the U world question bank they ask it a lot and uh, for step one and step two so in this video i want to um, just uh, share a mnemonic on how i um, get questions from um, this topic correct like the uses of uh, ssr right and some um, some points that you should also um, know about them and um, if you follow this rule it should help you in getting certain questions um correct so um so this ssri selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors they inhibit a serotonin um, reuptake so that there'll be more serotonin in the synaptic cleft for use and um so uh, basically these are the list of them um Fluoxetine, uh, paroxetine, those I've highlighted in the red are there, um, and sertraline. Sertraline is also um, very, very um, important. So, um, plus sertraline, so these four, one, two, three, four, are um, what I've mainly seen in, in, the, in the hospital here in the US. Uh, so, you should uh, know them very well. Uh, citalopram and excitalopram, you should, uh, you should. You should know them um, very well. So uh, these are the list. Now let's go quickly to um, the mnemonic. So these are the um, the uses, the clinical uses, and out of these uses, I have done a mnemonic, and I'm going to show you so that in your questions it will be easy for you to get your answers without wasting time. So the first one is depression, OCD, um, um, PTSD. Uh, premature ejaculation, premenstrual dysphoric uh, disorder and panic disorder, anxiety disorder, binge eating disorder and bulimia. So um, let me get um, this out and let's see. Let's use the, okay. So the mnemonic for, for that I use is um, DOPA, Dopa binge binge dopa binge is the mnemonic and so um this for dopa is d is for depression ocd and the p just remember that there are four p's okay and if you're doing your question you see if anything that begins with p you're not sure a ptsd is there um premature ejaculation premenstrual premenstrual dysphoric disorder and panic disorder um so four p's and anxiety disorder any anxiety disorder can be generalized anxiety disorder or social anxiety disorder once it's anxiety disorder we can use ssris as their first choice of treatment or first line and also binge eating disorder remember this is not uh, anorexia nervosa no it's just for binge eating disorder and bulimia something you can give it to the bulimics um, as well so b for bulimics b for um uh, binge eating disorder so the mnemonic again is dopa binge so you have this mnemonic in your mind as they use it so some of the questions they ask the question and they want they are asking you what's the first line treatment for this patient and if you know this as dopa binge you'll be able to get the questions correct now let's go to the next uh, slide. Um, so let, let's let's apply this to uh, some questions and see um, how we can um, 
use it let me erase this let's apply this to some questions and let's see how we can um, apply this concept to the questions so now this is the first question um, that reads so um, it reads a 22 year old uh, female college student uh, comes to the clinic to establish care she has no significant past medical history and her only complaint today is that she has had trouble maintaining consistent weight her her temperature um, is 98.6 blood pressure 100 over 65 uh, pulse is 62 respirations are 17 her bmi is 19.5 Physical examination on her physical examination is significant for um, callused knuckles. So this tells her that she's been thrown up and um, dental enamel erosion. What's the most appropriate treatment for this patient? So as we can see here, we can see some uh, buzzwords here. Uh, here we can see this, and um, we can the callused uh, knuckles. We can also see dental erosion and um, let me see here so i can i can highlight it right here as you all can see and um, so this patient you can also see the bmi here so and the complaint is also the and the bmi is uh, greater than 18.5 right so this patient we can diagnose this patient of having uh, bulimia and they are asking what is the most appropriate treatment and most likely they are asking us for the the drug of choice and you can pause the video and try to answer it but if i may go ahead give you just a, um, like five seconds to guess your answer you can pause the video so the correct answer here and um, as we can see we uh, we see um, different drugs over here. The correct answer is um, the SSRI is right here. SSRI is the correct answer. That's B is the correct answer. And um, so if we go through it, uh, duloxetin is an SNRI and it's not the first um, choice of treatment. Um, in this case, um, selegiline, it's also there and um, and it's not an SSRI, right? And phenelzin are also not SSRIs. And uh, metazepine uh, can also be used for uh, bulimics, but it's not a first line treatment. So um, basically, this this is it. So if you see the question, and then from our mnemonic, we said it is dopa binge, right? Dopa, dopa binge binge eating disorder right and bulimics b for bulimics so you should get your diagnosis correct right so b for bulimics b for um b for binge eating disorder and um, so that is helpful uh, to get your questions correct in the shortest possible time and then you move on to the next uh, question now let's look at the second uh, question as well um so this is the second question let's see how this works so which of the following is the most appropriate treatment for this patient they are also going after treatment a 60 year old man uh, presents to his primary care physician with weight gain he states that ever since his wife died four months ago he has been eating and sleeping more and no longer engage in any activities uh, he once enjoyed such as hiking and fishing he feels guilty for not spending more time with his wife before he died he has uh, recently fired he was recently fired for uh, making several uh, major uh, bookkeeping mistakes at work as an accountant as he had trouble focusing um, the patient is requesting oxycodone at this appointment as he says he has burning pain in his legs that feels worse now than it has it has in several years or in years past 
the patient has a past medical history of obesity, poorly controlled diabetes, hypertension, and a peripheral vascular disease. Vital signs are normal. Physical examination reveals a stable gait and reduced sensation symmetrically over the lower extremities. He complains of electrical pain when touching his lower extremities. His affect seemed depressed. Which of the following um, is the most appropriate uh, treatment for this patient? So you can pause the video and um, try to choose your answer and let's see if you will get it. So um, let's proceed in tackling this question. So this patient, obviously, um, he, he, has, he has, the wife has passed away, which is a major loss. And that's for the past four months, right? That's a trigger. And he's, been, he's having all the signs of depression. So I think we need, um, so he's been eating. That is one. So eating a lot, sleeping a lot. Um, he's no longer engaged in activities that he once enjoyed. So he has lost interest in um, activities. Um, he's feeling guilty, right? Um, how many? This is four signs. And what else do we have? The fifth one. And, and he's feeling guilty. And what? He's also what? Work. Uh, he's not being productive at work. So, um, so he's making several mistakes at work as well. So these are five the signs that we are seeing here and we have a trigger over here which is the wife dying four months ago and usually we diagnose depression after two weeks of a major loss now this patient does not only have um, depression there is also something going on and if you can see the patient has a peripheral um sorry he's having a neuropathy that's diabetic neuropathy because he has uh, poorly controlled diabetes as we can see here and he's having neuropathic pain um, so he has peripheral vascular disease also and you can see here they say he complains of electric pain when touching the lower um, extremities so that is a, a neuropathic uh, neurogenic pain right so um, what will be the answer here uh, we have several drugs amitriptyline as a TCA, bupropion, citalopram, which is SSRI, phenelzine, um, that's a MAL, uh, and then we have Van Lafersen, which is SNRI. So, um, if I may proceed with the answer, in this case, the answer is E. Um, the answer is E for this time, Van Lafersen. This is an SNRI um, because now this is an SNRI. Now, we said if a patient ha is newly di diagnosed with depression, depression, um, we give the patient what SSRI, SSRI, right? But in this case, the patient has depression plus neuropathy, right? Plus neurogenic uh, pain, ne neurogenic pain. So in this case, we switch the patient to, we add this to, we switch, we give the patient SNRI, rather SNRI, um, which is here, and the answer is Van Lafferson. So take note, even though uh, SSRIs are the first line uh, treatment for depression, if the patient comes with neurogenic pain like this, then um, we have to uh, make it an SNRI, rather. So uh, let's take note. Um, of that. Um, now, um, some, some things that we should, we should uh, bear in mind when prescribing SSRIs, um, they like to also test on things like this. So a patient uh, that you started on um, SSRI um, has come to you and this patient is complaining, maybe you started him on it and then he came maybe within two weeks and he's complaining that the drug is not working and he still feels depressed. What we should bear in mind um, is that SSRIs take about four to eight weeks to kick in. So the correct answer in that case should be tell the patient to return home and continue taking the drugs as prescribed and tell him that they usually kick in 
four to eight weeks. So if maybe at the end of the eight week or ninth week going and he's not feeling anything, then, then he can come to you for adjustment of those or change of the drug. Now, um, next slide. So there are certain adverse effects of SSRIs that we should uh, pay attention to. A serotonin syndrome, a very important um, GI distress, uh, SIADH, sexual dysfunction is very high yield. Serotonin syndrome is also very high yield and they also have decreased libido. Now, care should be taken that patients who have bipolar disease, if you give them SSRI, you are only treating the depression aspect. So the, the manic aspect is going to uh, just start to um, be free and then the patient is going to have a severe mania. So when you are prescribing a patient on SSRI, a patient who has depression, if you are prescribing him on SSRI, you want to ask the patient whether he has a history of bipolar so that you don't give him SSRI. Um, you rather give them drugs for um, bipolar uh, disease. And um, now let's go to the next slide. Um, so uh, for the SNRIs, um, these are some of the drugs for the SNRIs, um, venlafacine and duloxetine. They are the most important ones that I love to keep in my mind. And so I have this mnemonic that because sometimes they confuse me. If you see duloxetine and pyroxetine, like the names sound similar. So pyroxetine and fluoxetine are SSRI and venlafacine and duloxetine are SNRI. So I use the mnemonic P, um, VD, PF, VD, PF. So the PF are fluoxetine, flu, uh, sorry, uh, paroxetine for P and fluoxetine. Paroxetine, fluoxetine. These are the SSRIs, SSRIs. And VD, as we can see, a venlafacine and duloxetine. These are the SN. RIs, SNRIs, so that they do not uh, confuse you if you may. Um, so uh, thanks very much for uh, watching this video. Let me know exactly what you think about this video. Um, add any comment, like whatever you, you wish I should have added to this video. Uh, let me know um, if you have any contribution also to the video. Let me know, share with your friends, subscribe to this channel for more interesting videos. And um, I'll see you again in uh, future uh, videos. Um, thank you for uh, joining me today. And um, good luck with your prep.